Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and if you're a designer who works with Pantone swatches or really any global color swatch in Adobe Illustrator, I have a recolor artwork workflow for you that I'm going to demonstrate here that can help you to recolor your art with global swatches and generate tints of your colors. So this can help you to extend your color palette by just using a few colors or even create more of a muted or pastel palette. So let's take a look at how it works. And for this, I'm gonna be using some swatches that are part of a recent spoon flower challenge, uh, celebrating the new Pantone color of 2025, which is Mocha Mousse. And so this is a palette of colors here that I saved as swatches here in one of my libraries. I'm just going to click here and add them, add those selected swatches to my current document swatches panel. And then I wanna make these into a group because color groups work really well in recolor artwork. So I'm just gonna tap on the swatch folder with nothing selected and I'll call this Moose Palette and Moose. Let's see, maybe I should spell that better. Okay. And what I have here is just a blank group and I'm gonna drag these swatches. So I'm bookending, selecting them, holding shift, and then just dragging that whole selection into the folder. So what you'll see is when you have a color group, you can just apply it to your artwork. But what I wanna point out first is that there are eight colors here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we don't have to use all of the swatches in this artwork here. But one of the things that Spoonflower said we can do is we can use tints of any of these colors, but we can't use shades or darker versions of these colors. So I just wanna see if I can create some tints of these colors that will look good in this pattern. But what I have is eight colors to work with in the palette. And then here in the original artwork, I also have eight colors. So first to begin recoloring, I'm going to select this artwork, then go up to recolor artwork. And then I'm going to apply the color group by going to the color library menu and then go to swatch group. And there it is the one color group that I have saved on my swatches panel, the moose palette. There we go. All right. So it's pretty, it's kind of a blunt instrument here. It's just taking any one of these colors and turning them into any one of these colors. And yeah, you can shuffle around. You might find a better combination, but I really wanna start working from developing some tints for these so I can capture more of the values in the artwork. So I'm gonna go over to advanced options, which allows us to take more control over this process. And what I have here um, are my eight colors on the left and the colors that are in the color groups. You can see that kind of one-to-one -one relationship. Anything that was originally that lime green is changing into this white color, which is I think called cannoli cream. And then anything that's this color is changing into this color and so on. So uh, a couple of things I wanna do. Uh, first, I wanna look at the colorization method uh, that we're using here. So I'm going into the color reduction options. And here I can choose a different colorize method. Um, right now it's exact. And when you have exact chosen, um, you will see, you know, these, these swatches here are completely clear. There's no line going through them. Um, and like I said, you're getting full strength of every color in here, but we can choose scale tints. And I believe this might be the default and I just have had it set to exact before, but let's go to scale tints. And what this will do is allow us to develop tints or basically taking a color and adding white to it. So we can have tints of these global swatches here. Um, and then I also just wanna make sure that white and black are available for recoloring so I don't have these checked. Wanted to point that out. If your design has white and black and you really wanna assign it a color from this color palette, you wanna uncheck those. All right, so I'm gonna click okay. The colors shuffled a bit, but we do see that line there, but we're not creating any tints. And that's because I have eight colors on the left-hand side in the original art. And then I have eight colors in the color group that I'm applying here. So in order to start to generate tints, I'm going to have to reduce the number of colors. And here's what happens when you do that. Like, so I'm going to this menu and I'm just gonna choose five. So we're reducing from eight colors to five colors. And then you can see what Illustrator does is it starts combining uh, original colors into the art on a single row. 
And because I have scale tints chosen, um, I'm getting a tint or a light version of that color and then a full strength version of that color. So what Illustrator has done here, and it's not random, it's, you, can, you can actually really see it in this example here. It's doing the combination on these rows here by hue. So we see that this kind of lime green in two shades here, or two versions here go together. This aqua blue is on one. This um, darker blue is on its own. This warm color here is on its own. And then that whatever was white is on its own. So let's go over here and just see if I change this to three. Now we can see kind of all the cool colors are on one row. Those warm colors are on another row and that white is on an, on its own row. So that's what how it's doing this. Now you don't have to sort of stick by what Illustrator has done. So if you wanna take this color right here from the original art and move it into this row, you can do that. Um, but I will caution you that here in this panel, this is kind of the old uh, feature of recolor artwork and it doesn't have an undo or back button like the new feature does. We have a reset where we can completely start over. So whenever I start dragging things around, I, I try to remember where, where they were so I can put them back if I want to. But I just wanted to show you that you can drag around here. So now that I'm established this kind of making some tints here, I wanna work with the colors that are in the new row. So what we're doing is we're applying, or we started out by applying this eight color color group. We can see it right over here. Um, and we're see also seeing it at the top here. So it's basically got four of those colors, but because there are four other colors, we're not seeing them in here. And when I start shuffling, we're gonna see some of these other colors move into those four positions here. So I can just sort of start shuffling and colors begin moving in here. It's almost like, I like to think of it kind of like musical chairs. We've got four chairs here and eight people. And as the music is going, you know, people are getting close to a chair <laughs> like that. All right. So once you've shuffled around here um, and you find something that's, you know, working, that's kind of looking good to you, then it's probably a good time to exit and save because we've gotten a long way here. But uh, before I do that, I want to just show you how you can know what these colors are. I mean, I kind of already know that that's mocha mousse just by looking at it, but if you need to confirm that, um, we do have to kind of take an extra step here. So I'm gonna go over to the color here and double click on it, and that opens up the color picker. And we don't want this part of the color picker. We wanna go to the color swatches area. And here it's showing us every single color that is on our swatches panel and Mocha Moose is highlighted. So I can see that that's what that color is. And you know, if I wanted to change it to Laurel Oak, I would just click here, click okay. And now it's changed to Laurel Oak, but I really just want it to be Mocha Moose. So I'm gonna go back to my color swatches and put that back in there like that. All right, so now I have you know, a pretty good looking start going here. So I'm gonna click OK. And now I've got my recolored artwork. Now I just wanna make a couple of tweaks. So I'm gonna select the background here and let's see what happens if I change this to Mocha Mousse or maybe Warm Taupe. Um, I'll use Mocha Mousse for that. And then maybe I wanna change the leaf shapes to a different color. So these leaf shapes are copies. I've used them um, the same exact shape uh, all over this artwork. And that means that I'm able to uh, select it using uh, this feature here, start editing similar shapes together, which is called global edit. So I'm gonna click on that little pencil icon and it's gonna select every one of those copies there. And then I can, let's go ahead and I'll try making this mocha mousse. And it's maintaining that original tint that the blue was before. It's a 45%, but now it's 45% mocha mousse. Um, now that I've changed that, I'll just click away and we're exiting global edit. All right, and then another, here's another little X plus sign, which you can barely see because there's a lot of anchor points in there, but I'll select that 
uh, using start editing similar shapes together, this global edit button here. And now I've got all of them selected in my artwork. And maybe I wanna make this one the cannoli cream just so that they stand out a little bit more. All right, so I've made a few little updates there. Oh, I see one more thing. So this little um, pod here is like, that's a shape right there, but we can't see it because it's the same shape as the background color. So again, uh, I'll use global edit and I do have a video on global edit that I'll link to in the description so you can learn more about this feature. Um, but I'm gonna click on this and select all of those pod shapes and then just pick another color for those. So let's see what they look like as cannoli cream, like that, and they now they stand out a little bit more. Okay, so I've made a few changes to the color arrangement here. And now what I wanna do is I want to have swatches for those colors because as you can see, like if I click on the leaf shape here, it's mocha mousse 45 percent and I want a separate swatch for the, these lighter tints here. So what I'm going to do is create another color group um, and I'll start by selecting the artwork. Then I'll go down here to the new swatch group icon and just click on that and it lets me create from the selected artwork. So I'm going to call this moose, can I spell that moose with tints? Okay. And very important, uh, it's already global, so we got that checked, but we wanna include swatches for every one of those tints. So I'm gonna click OK. And now what we're seeing here is a color group with those tints in it. So let me deselect this and come over here. So the first is the full strength mocha mousse. And if I click on this swatch, you can see in the color panel, that's 100%. Then if I click on the next one, we can see it's 59%. And if I hover over it, it even has it added to the name there. It's now 59%. Here on this one, it's 45%. So I basically have one color, Mocha Mousse, and two other tints of it. And then here I have that Arona lighter blue color and a tint of that. Then I have Tapestry um, and an 85% tint of that. Uh, a 45% tint. And then I have two tints of this cannoli cream, which is kind of um, unusual because this is such a light color. I don't know if you can really see um, that 45% tint there. So maybe I want to get rid of that in my artwork so I don't have that extra in there. So to do this, I'm going to just select something that I know has that color applied to it. There it is. And then I'm going to go to the select menu and we can select the same and the same fill color here. And by the way, if you wanna do global edit, you would just select something and start global edit. Let's go back to select same and fill color. And now everything in this document that has that swatch applied to it is highlighted, whether it's a tint or not. And so I'm going to just reapply the 100% making sure that that's applied to everything, and then I'll click away. And now that I've changed that, I wanna generate a new color group. And the reason is because we've created several color groups here through this process, and I can select on the Mocha Mousse, and I'm seeing it in this color group highlighted, even though these are the same swatches here. Uh, so I'm gonna see maybe this darker blue color is also here. Um, but let's see, the cannoli cream is up here. So I, it's just not all in the same swatch group. And so I'm gonna regenerate the swatches by coming here and selecting the art, clicking on the folder, leaving everything checked as it is. So I'll call this new tints and then click okay. Now I have a color group that was generated from this artwork. And then to get rid of the duplicates, I'm going to Go ahead and select all of these old ones right here and throw them away. So now when I select the background, for instance, there it is in my color group and I have my tint swatches. And then this is really nice organized artwork. So now that I have a color group with separate swatches for each of those individual tints, I can go back and recolor other artwork with that palette. So I'm gonna select this and just go back up to recolor artwork. And this time 
In color library, I'm gonna choose that new color group that I created. And now because I have several different tints here, this is gonna represent the values in the artwork a little bit better. And I can use this shuffle button to just find a different combination for this art. Okay, so one last thing, I just wanna quickly show you how to make a tint swatch manually. So for example, let me deselect here and I don't have any art selected. I'm gonna take the Mocha Mousse and let's just say I want an 80% tint of that. Then I just type that in and then I'll take this swatch here and just drag it down into my swatches panel. And then we can see we have Mocha Mousse 80%. And if I want to do a 60%, and so I can kind of just create my own tonal palette here from individual colors just by doing it manually. All right. So I hope that gives you a lot of ideas for what you can do with global swatches, tints, and recolor artwork in Adobe Illustrator. Thanks for watching. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and in my online learning community. Find out more at my website, lauracoylecreative.com, and be sure to join my email list. You'll receive a welcome gift and helpful Illustrator tips delivered right to your inbox. And thanks for watching.